What do most students that come to me want? They want to hit the golf ball further. Well, to do that, we need to create more speed. Am I going to create more speed with tension, where I'm swinging the club very mechanically? Or am I going to create more speed by shaking it loose, getting those greasy elbows? Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how to properly grip a golf club. I'm going to explain to you what a weak and a strong grip are and then give you my preference for the grip. But before we get to that, I've really enjoyed bringing this free content to you and our YouTube community, it's growing and it's growing rapidly. And I want it to continue to grow and you can help me with that. And the way you can do that is by sharing this content with your friends, liking this video when it's over, subscribing to my YouTube channel, and the easiest way to do that, click on that little red box in the corner of this video, and that just alerts you when I have new videos available for you to watch, and then comment. So the first element I want to go over is the grip. And the most important thing uh, about the grip to me when I'm teaching people is that you have to have one. If I don't have a grip, I'm not playing golf. So there's a little bit of leeway there, and the reason that I say that uh, is we look at guys like Jordan Spieth, Paul Azinger, uh, come to the top of mind, Dustin Johnson, that have different sorts of grips, but I would take their playing record any day of the week. So when I go over the grip, I do teach probably 20 to 25 people a year that have never touched a club before. And so I'm putting the club in their hand for the first time, so I've got to have some sort of baseline that I like to work around. And that's what I'm going to share here with you. The most important thing, or the next most important thing about the grip, is that it matches your pattern. So I see people with a very weak grip. That would be both hands torn, turned towards the target, but they have it in a very nice position at the top of the backswing. I see people with very strong grips that would be turned away from the target, both hands. And again, the club's in a really good position or it could even be a little open. So just because I have a weak or a strong grip at a dress does not mean that that club is going to be weak or strong at the top of the backswing. A lot of things can change and that has to do with how I'm using my wrists in the backswing which I have plenty of videos about that uh, if you're curious on that. Okay, so let's get into what do I like to see. And I'm going to do this right-handed even though I have a left-handed club in my hand. So I start with the left hand and one thing about golf versus other sports. So if I was holding a tennis racket, I would hold it in my palm. Uh, if I was holding a baseball bat, again, the bat would be more in my palms we grip a golf club a little bit differently and the way we do that is we grip it more down in the fingers so when I close my hand the V that I create between my index finger and my thumb should point right of my chin and I'll take it as far right as your right shoulder don't want to see it outside your right shoulder now my right hand very simply comes in and covers the thumb and if I look down again, that V between the index finger and my thumb on my right hand points to about the same spot. It's right of my chin and can go as far right as my right shoulder. Now within golf, there's three different ways we can grip it. So the first one would be the 10 finger grip. That's where I have all 10 fingers touching the grip. The next one would be the interlock grip used by such players as Jack Nicklaus, Tiger Woods, most of us know those names, where the pinky finger of the right hand interlocks with the index finger of the left hand. And then there's what we call the Varden or overlap grip, and that's where the pinky of my right hand just sits inside the index finger of my left hand. So a drill that I give to my beginning students who are working on their grip, or if at any point in your career your grip gets out of whack and it's time for a grip change and I have a saying at my golf school change a grip lose a student 
but if you need to change it, I have what I call a regrip drill. And what you do is you just take a club, and wherever you watch TV, you drink your coffee, you put the club right there. And when you sit down, you pull the club over, and you, get, you put it right up in front of your face, and you get your left hand on there the right way first. Then you put your right hand on, you grip it, and you put it down. And then you do it again, and you do it again, and you do it again. So the next time you go to the golf course, your hands instinctively go to that position. Now, one last thing we need to talk about that gets asked at my golf schools, probably every school that I teach, and that's going to be tension or grip pressure. And I have one that I really like for that. So I want you holding on to the club. Obviously, I can't grip it so lightly that the club, especially hot uh, Florida in the summer, hands are sweating. I don't want the club to come flying out of your hands. So the way that I get rid of tension is I'll have a student hold a club up to me just like this and I'll walk in and I'll start pulling on the club or on the grip towards me away from them and usually it's a wrestling match. <laughs> There's a lot of tension, they're resisting me and what I get them to do or what I want to see them do is create greasy elbows or loosen those elbows up and as soon as I do that you can see the tension in my hands disappears as well. So those greasy elbows, and if we remember some of the old time golfers, Lee Trevino, Sam Snead come to mind, Chi Chi Rodriguez, when they would step into a golf shot, they would actually pump their arms just a little bit. And it was getting rid of that tension. It was creating those greasy elbows that then there was no tension in your hands. So one thing you can do as you're watching this video, I have one more thing to talk about as it comes to, when it comes to tension or pressure in your hands, is go ahead and stand up. I want you to hold your hands, both hands, out to your side and I want you to clench your fists as tight as you possibly can. And I want you to drop them. And what happened? They drop very slowly, very mechanically. Now I want you to go up there, I want you to shake it out nice and loose and I want you to drop. And what'd you hear? You could hear it on me, the slap. You could hear it as you did it yourself, the slap. Well, guess what that is? That's speed. What do most students that come to me want? They want to hit the golf ball further. Well, to do that, we need to create more speed. Am I going to create more speed with tension, where I'm swinging the club very mechanically? Or am I going to create more speed by shaking it loose, getting those greasy elbows, and you can see how those arms instantly start to swing faster. So now you understand how to properly grip a golf club. I've explained to you what a strong and a weak grip are and I've given you a very good way to grip the golf club that's going to help you to play the best golf you can. And remember the most important thing about that grip is that it matches your pattern. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I have two more here right now that I promise will continue to help you improve your game. And remember, please like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and comment.